This is Rio of Madison Rising, and you're watching Max Speed TV. evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to round two for pure speed elite series here at auto club speedway last week's intense racing at daytona has set the stage for the season that lies ahead and what an entertaining season it will be but tonight these drivers will battle it out for 80 laps in beautiful fontana california who will we see get their hollywood ending guys gotta stay tuned to find out it's gonna be one that you want to stay tuned for but uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And as always, Jordan McGraw here with us. How you doing tonight, Jordan? I'm doing all right. Just excited to 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 see what they have for the second act of this season uh, after the very entertaining first act that we got to see last week. I know. We're here for qualifying. So Auto Club, it's going to be a little bit slippery out there. And you can see there's a lot of fog. I'm hoping that is going to clear up, but we're going to find out. It, we have a lot going on. Right now, we're out there looking at the number 84 of Jacob Locklear going in for his qualifying lap. Uh, we're going to see what he can do out there, but there was a lot of strong guys we saw in practice. Can you tell us about a few of them, Jordan? Well, uh, uh, one, one driver that we're looking at is Marcus Adams, who uh, ran a time that was about a a tenth and a half faster than the rest of the field. Uh, so that's one driver that we're definitely going to have to look for. Uh, Ryan Steenbachers, Jaden Gimbel, Kyle Benson, Edward Schur, those were your top five from that practice session. And that's looking like a really strong group of drivers here. But obviously, practice and racing, completely different things. We're going to see how they line up here at a track where, uh, where track position is going to probably not be everything, but you want to be up front every lap of every race anyway. So uh, excited to see how this turns out. Absolutely. We have Austin Reedy out there in the 11. He's going about 180 mile per hour at the moment as he is on the apron. But man, these guys are absolutely flying tonight. And the action that we're going to see at Auto Club, you can't match it. I mean, one of my favorite tracks, I've seen these guys go two and three wide. They're going to get crazy out there. We're going to see a couple of cautions. But what a fun race that we're going to catch out there. We have the 18 of Richard Rico. He is doing a fabulous job out there trying to get those qualifying laps in. They have two laps to do it. So if they need to, if, if they're going to do it, they need to do it now. I see you guys out there in chat. What's up? Thank you so much for tuning in. But yeah, it is very foggy. It like looks red out there right now. I don't know what the deal is. Um, someone was joking around and saying uh, there, there's some crazy weather going on out there and a couple of talks of even like fires in the background <laughs> from it. I, I don't know, but uh, hopefully it clears up for these guys. Yeah, it's very interesting conditions. It's going to be late. The lights are out. It's smoggy, foggy, hazy, whatever you want to call it. Just uh, very interesting and, uh, and took some laps out there. And the track is incredibly slippery as well. So you just, as we were watching Tyler Werner there, he got a little, really, really loose coming out of turn four. Uh, so that's one thing we're gonna have, gonna watch for is these track conditions if they stay around. The these foggy conditions, the limit vi visibility, on top of it being nighttime, <laughs> so uh, that adds to the lack of visibility. And then the track incredibly slick, it's gonna make for a really tough challenge for these drivers. Absolutely. We're going to 80 laps tonight. The tire window, you're going to see around 25 to 30 laps with a fuel oh. window of 42 as we oh. have a huge uh, incident going on with the 19 of Jake Rowell out on qualifying. I don't know if uh, he was just messing around on his final lap, but you see the 50 of John Honeycutt. He is last week's winner for Daytona, so he is your points leader. But fuel window is going to be about 42 tires will not last that long though so these guys have their hands full tonight yeah, going back to that wreck from from the the 19 getting 
tight, maybe loose, maybe a little push loose, maybe a little loose tight trying to save the car. Whatever happened, uh, smoked the wall coming out of turn four and managed to hit nice and square on that pit road entry wall, ramped it, ended up on his roof. And oh, we have another car here, the five of Edward Schur. He's loose and he's, it looks like his car blew up. He's smoking as, uh, as we look at him through the haze. Uh, just already some some action uh hopefully this isn't a harbinger of things to come uh these guys can get these cars underneath them but now we're paying attention to the 20 of jane gimbal he looked loose coming out of turn two there so just a these drivers are gonna fight it tonight for uh eliza i think so we have a new leader um out there the 11 from what i saw austin reedy he was on the board for big fast racing uh, fastest lap time so far. Jaden Gimbel into the wall, and you guys, this is going to be crazy tonight. But uh, the number six of Andrew Wisdom, he is second on the board at a point one five zero. We have Kyle Benson, another really fast driver out there. But man, oh man, these guys, like I said, they have their hands full. But I have to talk about something for tonight. Uh, you know, today is the anniversary of Dale Earnhardt Sr., who he passed away. It was the anniversary of that, 20th anniversary. We will be holding a moment of silence on lap three in remembrance of racing Dale, racing legend Dale Earnhardt Sr. Uh, he will definitely never be forgotten. So we will go silent on lap three tonight. But thank you guys for tuning in for the subs, for the follows. You guys are amazing out there. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, yes, the fog, if you're a driver out there, not what you want to see tonight. It's going to cause some issues as far as visibility for these guys, obviously, but I don't think it's going to help them in how loose this track is here tonight, Jordan. Absolutely. And, and this weather, it's reminiscent of, uh, of the time that I went to school out in West Texas at a Texas Tag. This looks like a Lubbock dust storm. Uh, you know, it's got that Martian landscape look to it. Those red skies. Uh, you have to imagine <laughs> that that might be what's happening here in, in Fontana. Either uh, a big old dust storm whipping through or this, the, the entire track got transplanted to Mars. So one of the two happened. I don't know which one's more likely, but we can run with whichever story uh, y'all want to. Exactly. And I have ran a race in the fog and it is very difficult. We have some drivers out there saying that it's going to be a wild ride and they are not joking. Auto Club, I'm, I'm hoping it clears up, but man, oh man, it does not look like it's going to. But take a look at these qualifying times. We've got the 11 on the board with a .140, the 6 of Andrew Wisdom with a .150 in second. We have the 4 of Kyle Benson. He's got a .267. Like I said before, these guys are all very strong that I've seen in practice. Uh, the number 17 of Matthew O'Brien for Nitro Motorsport. He is out there with a point two eighty three, seventy nine. 79. Uh, that's Ryan Steenbachers for Big Fast Racing. And he's looking pretty good out there too. So we're going to have a lot of competition out there. But they're going to have to take control of their cars. And they're going to have to kind of take it easy for the first couple of laps while they're trying to get the feel of the car and how it's going to handle tonight. Yeah, and we're seeing some times that were that were pretty well off of uh, off of the practice times. Matthew O'Brien actually picked up a little bit, but Ryan Steenbarker's about a tenth slower than he was in practice. Edward Scherer exactly a, a, a tenth of a second more than he was in practice. So uh, the conditions not quite as good as they were during the practice session for this qualifying session. I uh, have to imagine that that was playing with all these guys. And, of course, you only have a handful of laps to uh, to put down right. that that, uh, that that lap time that you want to. And the, uh, a lot of these drivers were sending it. We saw Jaden Gimbel, one of the fastest cars in practice. He wrecked it. He was able to get a time down, but he's only in back at 13th after being your third fastest car in practice. So, And our first, our fastest car, Marcus Adams, back in 19th. Uh, a 40.779 so obviously a lot of these drivers overestimated the grip level they would get when they uh, launched into this qualifying session i agree and as you said you know you only get two laps out here and once you hit hit the track your tires are cold they're going to be super slippery so you kind of have to work around that so 
Uh, these guys' lap times are not as good as practice when they had a lot of laps on there. I find that lap two, three, four, uh, you are getting better lap times once they are warmed up. So hopefully these guys will take it easy going into lap one of the race, but man, they're gonna have their hands full. I just realized I was completely reading my my, my uh, thing wrong. Austin Reedy on the pole with a 40.140. He was actually a tenth and a half faster than he was in practice. Andrew Wisdom was two tenths faster than he was in practice with a 40.1. So a couple of drivers in the ones there. Then they fall off a fair amount. But Reedy and Wisdom on the front row here is we're about to call the, the grid. We're about to call the grid. They are lining up and man, oh man. That fog is still right there, but we are going to get to the grid in the order of these guys. We have John Honeycutt, who was out there. He won Daytona, so he is the points leader. We'll see what happens tonight, but row one on pole is Austin Reedy in the number 11. We have Andrew Wisdom in the number six on the outside. Row two, we have Kyle Benson in the number four car with the 17 of Matthew O'Brien on the outside. Row three, we have Ryan Steenbachers in the number 79 with Edward Schur on the outside. Row four, we have the 53 of James Hudson and the 33 on the outside of Tyler Werner. And row five, we have the 18 of Richard Rico with the 41 of Justin Mons on the outside. Row six, Michael E. York in 11th with Corey Anden in the 15 on the outside of him in 12th. Jaden Gimble will start 13th with Chandler Hayden alongside him in row seven. Kelly Melanson will be on the inside of row eight with John Honeycutt, last week's winner, in 16th. Row nine, Jacob Locklear, uh, Honeycutt's teammate, uh, with Tyler Brown alongside him in his Toyota. Marcus Adams in the 31 will be in row 10 with Brandon Gillis outside of him in 20th. Row 11, Doc Holliday in that 88, you guys know him. And we have Jason Keffer on the outside in 22nd. Row 12, we have Chris Gutierrez uh, in that number 02 car with 19 of Jake Rowell on the outside. Row 13, uh, we're going to ignore that. <laughs> But on 26, we have NNR Chevy on the outside. <laughs> Row 14, we have Kate Gimble in the number two with Christopher Fafke on the outside. And row 15, uh, looks like that's all we're going to have there for tonight. So this is a full field out here tonight. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in. And we will have a moment of silence on lap three in remembrance of Dale Earnhardt Sr. Any final thoughts before we get to the race, Jordan? I, I'm excited to see if these drivers can hold on to it. Uh, like, like I said, we've seen some talented fast guys have some mistakes during the qualifying session. The back four on, in the field, unable to put down a time. And I'm just looking at the times. I imagine uh, several other drivers had issues as well. Uh, will that lack of grip carry on into this race? The conditions look about the same as uh, they did during qualifying. So have to expect a lot of drivers going to be searching for grip, going to have to take it easy, be easy on the steering, easy on the throttle. Just try to log some laps and hope the rest of your competition is the one that makes mistakes and that you don't get caught up in that mistake. We are still under pace, but as soon as that safety car uh, goes on to pit road, Austin Reedy will lead us to green and we will get underway. Very exciting as we have this six. You guys saw him on the outside, so very exciting here tonight. But the safety car is off the track and uh, here we go. Austin Reedy getting ready to lead us off. It's going to be a wild one tonight, so make sure you buckle up and tune in. Here they go. They are off and running. We are green at Auto Club Speedway. Look at these guys. Very, very close, Jordan, as these guys are just side by side. Turn one, though. I'm a little nervous for it. You see some guys Already really low. <laughs> yeah, three wide for second place. 79 backs it off. Austin Reedy still in the lead, but the four is coming for it. He is on the inside, and they have a hungry pack behind him. 
Yeah, the 79 got real aggressive with that start. That cost him some time. He fell back into, into about that fifth place area, but the, those drivers gave him a break. Oh, the four car already really loose, getting on throttle. He's going to lose a lot of time as he's going to fall back to the field here. Four of Kyle Benson underneath the apron. He's got to get back up there. There he goes. But man, oh man, three wide already here tonight. And these guys are just trying to make up any position that they can get. He is currently P6. We'll see if he can get up there. Austin Reedy in that 11. He has led one lap so far. He's got a little bit of a gap between him and second place. So he is a phenomenal driver. I've seen him. I watched him throughout last season even. And he is definitely one to look out for. Really fun to watch. But the guys behind him, they are nose to tail, Jordan. Absolutely. And that 79 car that made a, uh, some aggressive moves there at the start. He has worked his way back into that second position. He is now trying to search down the 11 of Austin Reedy. He has cleared that six car. He's working his way, trying to get up to the front, already putting a massive gap, but we have a gaggle of cars right now racing for that third spot, five of, our, five of them, which you can cover with a blanket as they go down into turn three. <laughs> Slap three. Well, we're gonna take a look at that replay. Uh, lap four of 80, Justin Mons. It looks like he was involved. Let's take a look at what happened here. He hits the wall, gets a little tight coming off the corner and collects. Uh, looks like the four car of Kyle Benson. Really unfortunate, but uh, Auto Club, you have to have that perfect line. If you're going too low, you're going to get loose and dive low. But if you're getting tight, you're going to find that wall. And that's exactly what happened here, Jordan. Yeah, he just, he just sliding up. He's putting too much input, too much input. And at that point, the car snaps on him as it gets that as it starts to hook up on the exit. And yeah, the four car just ended some bystanders. The 41 loses control there. Uh, nothing they can't bounce back from. If you're going to have an issue, you might as well have it early on in the race where you can uh, make your way back to the front. But still not what you wanted, not how you wanted this early uh, race to go. Absolutely. It's crazy so far, but these guys uh, were on lap four. It's still super early, 80 laps total. So plenty of racing left to do here. You can see another replay of that. Man, Kyle Benson just nowhere to go as he is trying to make his way off the wall. It just came off and uh, that's the end of that one. All right, Jay, it is Eliza in the booth. How you doing out there? Oh, we're doing good, kind of hard to see. We got a forest fire coming in here, so it's interesting. But the car's really loose right now, and you can kind of tell from that last caution, it's gonna be it here. It definitely looks a little loose out there. I wish you guys a ton of luck. Don't want to bother you too much, but uh, we'll see how it goes for you guys, and lots of luck out there. Yeah, thank you. All right, you heard it from Jaden Gimble out there. Uh, he, he called it. He is running uh, <laughs> pretty good so far tonight, but very, very loose. And that is the story that we're going to hear a lot as we have 11 of Austin Reedy. He is going to be out there leading the field to green once again. excited for this restart if we'll see a little more aggression that it looks like some of those drivers there was a there were a couple of bonsai moves going into turn one but not really i wonder if that wreck is going to settle these drivers down or if that's uh the field being tightened back up might embolden them to be a little more aggressive that that 11 car of austin reedy was able to pull out a long way on that restart uh if he's able to uh, hold on to his stuff, not burn it up while running that pace, then uh, 
that's going to be real tough to beat. But a driver that I'm looking at, Marcus Adams, with a little bit of maybe strategy here on this uh, pit cycle, he, is, he started 19th. He will start on the front row for this restart outside of Austin Reedy. So a little, an early, early uh, uh, gambit to try to get some track position here out of that 31 driver. Yeah, he's got a lot of experience out here on the track, so I think he'll do well. Uh, but I've talked to him before the race, and he was concerned if his uh, if he was able to even finish the race. So I'm hoping he can, that he has a solid finish. But these guys will be getting uh, back to green pretty soon as we are on lap 6 of 80. He is going to be on the outside of Austin Reedy. Two very talented competitive guys out here so it'll be a fun race to watch as these guys head back to green here they come the pace car coming around the corner and we'll see if they go in right uh, on this lap but marcus adams p2 like jordan said he started 19th so i want to see him up here i want to see him stay we'll see what happens pace car is off the 19 is going to lead him off green to light. green and they are back to green. Here we go once again. Man, the fog is crazy out here, guys. Let me know who you think is going to win out here. Driver. You can see the field as they are rushing by the cameras. Austin Reedy, a nice little lead out there. But Marcus Adams already trying to take a peek on the outside. He's going to stay tucked behind Austin Reedy. But I don't think it's going to be for long, Jordan. Absolutely don't. That's the one beauty about this track. You go up into the corner, you can take a different line, but he's going to follow that 11 car into turn three, stay right in his tire tracks, exit a little bit higher, maybe a little bit tighter in that wake, a little bit of uh, arrow tight, trying to run behind that leader, but he's able to oh, keep the gap as there is a wreck in the back. Oh, wreck in the back, and that is going to bring out our second caution of the night. Let's see the replay. 15 and it looks like the four once again of Kyle Benson. What a, a struggle for him so far tonight. We have Corey Anden and the 15 involved also. Let's take a look at what happened. 15 oh, oh, coming 15 up. Just, oh. The 15 just gets tight and doesn't know that the four car is outside of him. The four has been an innocent bystander in two wrecks. Nothing he has done wrong at all. But he has been in the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, that's going to be a little bit heavier damage, I think, than that first one. Yeah, frustrating night for Kyle Ooh, Benson so far. And uh, yeah, the 15 collects yet another car. But Kyle Benson involved in both cautions. The first one with Justin Mons and this one with Corey Anden. And you can see he is just still spinning out there. You can see uh, he's got Dale Earnhardt on his car here. Uh, so very cool to have that out there, but man, oh man, tough break for these guys, but they will have to go in. They do have one fast repair, so Kyle Benson, well, he didn't I'm thinking it. he already used it, so he might be on pit road a little bit as he just gets smashed into the wall. Very unfortunate, Jordan. Yeah, and a big hit for the O2 of Chris Gutierrez and all that as well. Uh, just a, again, a, an innocent bystander, nowhere for him to go as uh, he's just trying to, to, to make it through the wreck and log some laps. Uh, the 20 of Jaden Gimble was behind that accident as well. The track clears out for him nicely for him to be able to make it through. But again, some early fireworks here at, at Auto Club. And uh, I think we, we kind of expected that uh, just from what we saw in practice and in qualifying. I think we expected the grip level to be incredibly low and uh, for these drivers to have to manage it well to succeed. And so far, uh, score score a couple of points for the track because uh, uh, it's taken a, taken a few casualties so far. Yeah, crumbled up Kyle Benson on pit road, but we're back with the leader of Austin Reedy and that 11 under caution once again. Uh, these guys, man, you know, it's just something that they're going to have to be a little patient with. And with that situation that just happened, there's not much you can do about it. You you know that Corey Anden, he, he didn't want to get tight. He didn't want to go up into the wall. It's just one of those things. This is a tough track. It's extremely loose, and the tires are wearing very quickly. They're not even right just yet. They're not even getting a chance to wear down. Uh, but you see, 
the 31 of Marcus Adams directly behind Austin Reedy. They will come back uh, once again after caution as 1-2. Will and another driver that's made his way toward the front, uh, Jake Rowell. We watched him have a, a, a massive accident in qualifying, and uh, and he started 24th. He is up to 7th now, so plus 17 for Jake Rowell in the, the 19 car, uh, according to the, the thing. So, uh, yeah, uh, another driver that's kind of moved up, Doc Holliday from 21st to 10th. Uh, in and our Chevy from 26th to 13th. So several drivers working their way through the field, and that's just kind of what we're going to see with a race where drivers are struggling for grip, and we're going to see some comers, and we're going to see some goers, and uh, hopefully at some point we're going to get to see some green flag action. <laughs> I think we will, but these guys just need to get a hold of their cars and what it's doing tonight. I mean, cold tires and... Not a lot of laps here ran just yet as we're under caution on lap 10. But they are getting back to lining up and uh, we should be getting ready to go back. We have a couple of fans out Not there going. for Honeycutt. Not they going. are always in chat. Love it so much. Uh, Honeycutt, if I saw, he was currently sitting P8, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, hopefully we'll take a look at that on the ticker pretty soon here. Seven. But seventh yeah so doing great he was our winner last week at daytona great way to start uh great way to start the series here so no complaints about that but you, you gotta Somebody love even it. say a win is the best way to start out the series <laughs> absolutely i mean that's the race that you want to win to start out it really sets some momentum for what's to come so really cool to see out here Look at these guys. That is a huge field. A couple of more guys catching up to line up as they get ready to go back to green at Auto Club Speedway. <sighs> Jordan, I, I got to ask, how many cautions do you think we're going to see here tonight? Well, at the at the pace we're on, we're, we're looking at about uh, at about 16. So uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we don't stay on that pace. Uh, I, I would it definitely expect about seven or eight. It's just going to happen with a bunch of drivers who are trying to get everything they can on a tough racetrack. So I fully, I fully expect uh, there to be more yellows. But I, 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 I have full faith in these guys. That we're going to be able to go green here, and uh, and make a handful of laps before our next one. But already, uh, only 22 cars of the 26 that started this race, uh, only 22 of them. Uh, on the lead lap, we've already had four uh, either uh, drop out or lose uh, laps due to repairs. So the, the field is slowly thinning out. Really unfortunate. And I know that fog is definitely not helping tonight. These guys are still under pace, but there is a lot more racing to get to. So I, I think that once they go for a couple of laps and it, they start to spread out, I think we're going to see some green run. Uh, some green run laps here but until then they really have to hold steady and try to take control when uh the car wants to slide and that's going to be a lot here tonight that is just an antsy looking pack right there as they're coming <laughs> down the back straight uh you can see these these guys want to race you can definitely see these drivers want to race that 11 car he wants to make some laps he's looked really really solid uh in our 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 uh, in what green flag racing we've had, the 31. This is the best track position he's had in the two races this season. He wants to show what he's made of racing with that 11 car. And then, of course, those second, third, fourth rows on back. They want to do something with this 11 and not let him get away this time like he has the previous restart. Absolutely. And I think some of, some of the mistakes that are going on is maybe too much aggressiveness. You know, the car... Uh, tires you're green just flag, coming flag. out of here as they're getting ready to go back to green and already here they go and we're gonna have a nice camera view right here as they fly past but take a look at this guys trying to settle in and trying to find their spot as they head into turn one but austin reedy still in the lead with the 31 of marcus adams behind him we have the 53 of james hudson currently sitting p3 but marcus adam already going for the lead side by side with austin reedy in that 11. these guys are going to battle it out and man oh man this is what i want to see for 
Absolutely, side by side for the lead. The 31 using that run he got as they tried to get up to speed. The 11 using that high line, trying to get the run off the corner. He's going to get down behind the 31, slip stream off of him. Now he has the option. Does he want to run in line or does he want to try to make the pass? He'll try to make the pass here. He's going to use the outside line. The 31 will have the shorter but tighter way, the way to go. The 11 going to try to use that longer way to generate some momentum so that he can make this pass back and retake the lead on the back. He's got the lead. Meanwhile, for third place, these guys were three wide at one point. We had James Hudson in that 53. We had the nine uh, of Brandon Gillis. These oh, the guys, nine. they have some contact out there. They are able to hold on to it. And man, oh, man. impressive driving right there. As there's more contact, and they are still holding on to it. Gives them a bump back. These two are just battling it oh, out. The, the nine. nine goes through the grass, trying to make it back on track. I do believe that might bring out another caution, but we're going to see if they can hold on to it. Caution here. Yeah, that's definitely a yellow. Three, four cars wrecked. Saw the 50 of John Honeycutt last week's winner. He was spinning through the infield grass. Uh, just like you said, Frozen, uh, just some just some oh. incredible aggressiveness here. As yeah, as we're watching the replay, the the 50, uh, the 53, I believe, that, that black and orange and pinkish or Hooters car, yeah, him and the nine just bouncing off of each other for about a half a lap. And eventually, uh, <laughs> you know, something's got to give. And turns out both of those cars give. And the 50, nowhere to go. He plows into this accident as well. Unfortunate. We've had a couple of uh, victims with just nowhere to go as these guys are losing it. But man, oh man, the 53 out there just bumping and banging with the nine car. A little bit aggressive tonight. And here we go, we have an accident, a caution come out from it. James Hudson of JSR, uh, not gonna be good for him. You can see a lot of damage as uh, he is out there currently. Yeah, James Hudson, <laughs> yeah, that all started off of turn four, the 19 really, or through three and four, I should say, the 19 really used up the 53. And uh, I think he just uh, kind of got tired of it, the 19 really 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 uh uh or the nine excuse me whatever that car number is it's different in multiple places but the yeah jake jake joel uh or roel i should say jake roel those two not happy with each other it didn't look like and uh it's, it's really early in the race to be uh to be this angry but uh, i think these guys are just getting the jitters because we can't get any green flag racing in yet yeah, we have a couple guys saying that's a little dirty out there. I'm curious if that is going to bring out any more rivalry going on throughout tonight. Will we see any more contact between the 53 and the 9? Uh, not happy. And you know John Honeycutt in that 50 car who's out there fixing damage at the moment. You know he is not happy. Oh, and another car caught up at the very, very, very end of this. Uh, who was that? Uh, that was the uh, NNR Chevy. NNR Chevy just. Barely got clipped by the 53. He's going to have some damage to, to work on. Uh, just that contact, so maybe that's something he can repair on pit road and hold on to that uh, fast repair if that's what he chose to do. But, uh, yeah, that's just a just a crazy wreck. And on a straightaway. And on the, <laughs> and on a, on the front stretch, uh, no less. That was a lot of bumping and banging. You're out here with the 37 of NNR Chevy. Uh, currently 21st, started 26th. Yeah, we'll see what happens with him. He's trying to fix up that damage, but you see Jason Keffer in the 22 car. He's going to come out P1 as we are trying to go back to green once again. We're under a third caution tonight. So these guys, some of these guys are trying to make some strategy moves, trying to get to the front and stay clear of what's going on uh, in the field. It's kind of it's kind of crazy out there, Jordan. Yeah, you, you, I don't think anybody wants to be, you know, third on back right now <laughs> no. uh, just because of, of, of how crazy it's been back there. 
and and this racing is so tight it's very dra draft intensive the, the the corners are incredibly loose incredibly slick incredibly hard to control but it's still a very very long large wide fast racetrack and so the draft still plays a massive uh, part in it and that keeps the field bunched up so on top of all of these drivers uh, struggling for grip struggling to hold control of their car they don't have a lot of room for error because they're all still on top of each other so just tough tough conditions as speaking of the conditions it seems that the uh, that the dust storm has cleared out a bit or at least it's less noti noticeable as the lights have come on here at Auto Club Speedway. I'm curious if that's going to help these drivers out. You can tell that it's still a little foggy, but it, it, it looks definitely a lot better on track. But Marcus Adams in that 31, he has come out. He's going to be on the outside of 22 of Jason Keffer, the 11 of Austin Reedy, who has led quite a few laps here tonight. He is going to be tucked in behind and third behind the 22. Uh, you can see the five out there on the outside. These guys are going to have a lot to go for right here. And I, I do see the 24 or the 84, I should say, of Jacob Locklear. He is currently tucked in behind the five car along with, if I can see who that is, the 88 directly underneath him. So that's going to be your top six right there as we head back to green once again with a new leader of Jason Ready, Keffer. Flag. Jason Keffer with a great launch there. The 11 also, those those two inside cars, the five is going to get down and behind them. That's going to leave the 31 of Marcus Adams all by himself. Last uh, restart, he was able to, to use that draft to get a run. The 11 going to try to do the same thing with the 22. Oh. He pushes up a little bit. They are going to split him three wide. Keffer is going to fall back to fourth as the 31 and the 11. They recontinue their battle for the lead that they started last uh last green flag run absolutely and did you see that five car on the bottom i saw him get a little loose but he held on to it jason keffer has moved back to p4 but p3 of edward sure he's doing a fantastic job we have marcus adams in the lead but that 11 of austin reedy he's knocking on marcus's door saying i want that lead back and he's going to try to do it the battle that these two guys were having such a such a fun battle to watch but marcus adams uh you may start to put a little bit of gap if on austin reedy as soon as i say that he catches right back up but uh it's gonna long line out there jordan a very long line as i see the five car make a little bit of contact with the wall we'll see how these guys fare yeah the 11 car uh, he he's aside from the pace car he has been the dominant car so far early in this race uh, right now, this is an unfamiliar position for him to be in, in second position. Uh, how will he deal with it? He's still, he's, he's trying to make a little bit of a move. It's nothing too aggressive. I think he's just trying to show the 31 what he's capable of, make some moves, maybe try to, to, to lull the 31 asleep or maybe force a mistake. He runs a little bit high off of the, off of turn two. He's going to stay tucked in line, push him down the 31, or push him down the straightaway, maybe send him in just a little bit faster than he wants to go and try to make that pass off of turn four and down the front straight. Have, uh, yeah, we're back on board with 11 of Austin Reedy, and there he goes for the lead. Can he secure the lead right there? He's got some help of the five directly behind him. Marcus Adams staying really up high. I'm surprised, but look at that run as Austin Reedy tried to pull out in front of him, but didn't have the room. These guys are still battling side by side. Phenomenal what that 31 was able to do on the high side. That's one of the fun things about Auto Club. You can run so many different lines, and these two are showing that right here as the top three. They are on top of each other. Yeah, the top three on top of each other, the 22 of Jason Keffer after, after a rough first lap. Oh, the 31 gets the apron just a little bit, has to let out of it a lot. That'll move the, the five car up into second place. Keffer now going to try to run down the 31 of Adams as we have a yellow out on the track once again. Oh, man, yellow out just as these guys are really getting some uh, competition going on here in this top three or four. But... Great, great run so far. We have the 02 and the 88 out here. We'll see what these guys, uh, what happened with these guys. But man, lap 23 of 80. Very interesting. We'll see how it happened. We're going to take it back here. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, oh, the O2 yeah. Big loot. Big just, loot. Yeah. He gets loose. Let's see if he collects anyone. Hopefully not. So far, everyone's able to get around him, but close call. Uh, shouldn't have any... Oh! Wow, look at that, how close that was. I was about to say, shouldn't have any damage, and I saw a car coming. Decided to wait on that one. Yeah. <laughs> really lucky uh, for a spin up there, for no one to get collected in it. Yeah, the O2 just loses it. Just a little too much throttle uh, off of the corner. Just lost it, but a great job of gathering it back once he did. Lock, you see the tires locked down on that car and then lets them go once it gets back straightened back up. An excellent job wow. of driving, really, honestly, by everybody involved, including Absolutely. that O2 of Chris Gutierrez, to not make that worse than it could have been. Yeah, he did a phenomenal job of trying to keep it in one area and not fly across the track. And uh, I don't know who that was that almost hit him, but great reaction by him to miss him. You guys saw it right there. It was very, very close, but we have Austin Reedy, uh, he's going in for a pit stop. We have the five car. We have the 22 of Jason Keffer. All of these guys coming in for another pit stop. So we'll see what these guys do as they, uh, I, I don't know how many, if they have a certain set of tires that they can use out here, but uh, with the amount of cautions that we're seeing out here, they might hit their limit, Jordan. Yeah, they might hit that limit uh, pretty, pretty soon. Uh, that's definitely going to, if there is a tire limit, that's definitely going to throw into uh, into uh, a little a wrench into the works as uh, these drivers are trying to uh, keep their tires fresh, trying to maximize their opportunity on these restarts. Uh, track position is great, but if the car isn't handling well, then there's not a lot you can do with it. But uh, yeah, uh, just right now the strategy is not to wreck i think is the uh, is the best strategy you can have because uh, right now the field is thinning out driver a lot of drivers having issues uh you want to you want to keep that car underneath you you want to stay away from everybody and uh, you just want to make it to the end here because at the halfway point we're going to find out who still has a clean car maybe who still has a fast repair in their back pocket and, and then we're going to see who has a chance to win this race see the 84 of jacob lockley a little strategy call on his end uh, he's out there for team ftr i know that he's been out there racing several leagues so if he can hold on to first and try to keep his car clean he's gonna have a great shot tonight very talented here he's got the 33 i do believe that is tyler werner of jgm so he's gonna be out there starting second you see the 31 is back He's out there on the high side, along with Austin Reedy. Uh, he's out there lining up. So these guys are back, getting in order and ready to go back to green. But, man, oh, man, it's going to be another tight one there, Jordan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the uh, Those front two, uh, or that front row, that front car, the 33, is uh, falling back through the field, the field right now. Jacob Lockley, Locklear will take the green flag on that inside line. Marcus Adams will be second. Austin Reedy. Edward Schur, those three have kind of been the three that we've seen up front, uh, especially on that last run. But uh, I was I was really impressed what uh, Jason Keffer was able to do with a little bit older tires. Uh, now that he's uh, got some track position up in eighth right now, he'll have to be on the same sort of cycle as the rest of these guys. What will he be able to do with it? And another driver, we saw the 20 of Jaden Gimbel. He's kind of been in mid-pack. He's up to seventh right now, so... A few new faces in this race, but still really, really early to find out what everybody's got for these closing uh, 55 laps or so. I just tried <laughs> to do math and almost completely botched it. Math is hard. <laughs> we'll see what these guys can do as we head back. But Jacob Locklear, he is going to be leading the field with Austin Reedy in the 11 behind uh, like Jordan said, we got the 31 on the outside and pace car. Once he is off, these guys will get moving once again. And there he goes. So we're going to see how Jacob can do out here in the lead. And uh, if that clean air is going to help him out a little bit. 
Green flag back underway, and these guys are lined up double file. And what's funny is that uh, the top two guys right here, Marcus Adams and Jacob Locklear, they've been racing together for quite a while. So it'll be cool to see them out here once again, side by side, and we'll see what happens. Jacob getting a little tight, trying to hold on to it. He's going to fall back. That's going to take him three wide for second as Marcus Adams takes over the lead. And that is a very crowded track there, Jordan. Absolutely. The 64 just didn't have quite the speed through one and two. Held up that inside line. That'll let the 31 to get free. But right now, the five car is all over the back of the 31. Edward Scherer is looking for the lead right now on the inside of Marcus Adams. He's going to try to take it as they go down to one. Yeah, we have a couple of guys. John Honeycutt saying he's got 30 minutes of repair. So. He is unable to finish here tonight. Really unfortunate, but you were on board with the five at Ed, of Edward Schur. Directly in front of Marcus Adams, who is going to tuck it down underneath, going to try to take that over. Man, oh man, he's going to take over the lead once again. He is going to be proven that he is going to be the one to beat here tonight. We've seen him make his way up to the lead a few times already. So the battle that he's going to have with a lot of these guys is really going to be fun to watch. Absolutely. The five is fighting back, though. These two going back and forth, trading the lead. The 31 is getting it where you want to. He has it at the start finish line to lead that previous lap. But the five of Edward sure fights back on the inside. But the 31 of Marcus Adams, Adams is going to have that run off of the corner. The five going to be pitched down just a little bit, giving him plenty of room. It's way, way too early to be using that much racetrack. These two keeping it clean while racing each other really hard. The 11 right now, it looks like he's just kind of biding his time back there in third. Have to imagine that he's maybe trying to save his stuff as this, this feels like a run that could go green here. The 11 has to, you have, you have to wonder with that gap that's kind of formed in front of him, maybe he's just kind of laying back and letting these two duke it out. But right now the five and the 31 putting on a heck of a show. They sure are. The five is holding back just a little bit now as a 31 has a little bit of a gap about 0.3 in front of him. So uh, really close here. We have Edward Schur and the five directly behind our leader. These two kind of leaving the pack here. So we'll see if they can continue that trend. But uh, man, oh, man, it's going to be crazy out here. We have the 11, though, not ready to give up this fight. He's been up front quite a bit. These three are just leaving the field behind him. Austin Reedy, Edward Schur, and we have Marcus Adams, your top three, and they are off and running. They are off and running, and you saw in that shot there, those three had pulled away, and the rest of the field all over the racetrack using different lines down the front straight. Uh, right now, the top ten or so, it looks like single file but right now as we as i say that the 11 looking on the inside of the five he's going to try to take over second place it looks like he's decided it is time to go here the 31 now has an option who does he want to pull it looks like he's going to work with that 11 car he's going to pull the 11 car past the five but the five with that outside lane able to hold serve as they're going to go down into turn one side by side for second place with the leader only a car length ahead of him Look at that battle for a second. I mean, it is really heating up out here. And the more they battle it out, the more the guys behind him are able to catch up. You see Jacob Locklear, he lost several positions after leading the field back to green. Uh, so he is trying to make his way back up there. But look at the cars he's got behind him. He's got the 20 of Gimbal. He's got the 22 uh, of Keffer. So very, very tight out here. Tight racing, a couple of different packs. And these guys, what they need to do right now is just work together, try to catch the guys in front of them, and then battle it out. You see the 53, he is currently sitting P9. That is James Hudson. He struggled out here, Jordan, at the beginning. He was involved in a caution, but uh, it seems like now he's kind of he's kind of getting to the tune of things. Yeah, he, it wouldn't. It wasn't so much him struggling as uh, he was in the wrong end of uh, of getting planted in the wall. Uh, yeah. But he's, uh, he's he's rebounding a little bit we're, as we're cycling through the field. There's the 41 of Justin Mons, another driver who was involved in a, in a wreck earlier in the race. Uh, one of the he got loose off of turn four. Uh, right now, a, a much stronger, much uh, safer uh, 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 
path right now that he's taking as he's just trying to make laps and gain positions. But we have had a change for the lead up front. The five has managed to work his way around the third. So we would move Edward Scherer to the lead. Marcus Adams now looking on the inside as the 11 try to decide which lane he wants to take. The 5 and the 31 continuing to battle while the 79 car is slowly easing his way into the picture. Yeah, the 31 has a little bit of a nose out and he take back the lead, but the 5 car, he's going to battle it out. But he's on the high side by himself. He'll get some nice momentum coming off the corner, but it, I don't think it's going to be enough to stop these two. You have Austin Reedy way down low with Marcus Adams, who's going to be on the high side. These two are going to battle it out as these guys switch yet again. We have Ooh, Austin I... Reedy <laughs> to the lead, and man, that was a close slide job right there. Back and back again. Here we go. We have Marcus Adams diving down, trying to take the lead. Austin Reedy, he's got quite the momentum on that outside, and he's going to hang on to that lead. Yeah, he played that entire restart really well. The 31 and the 5 ran work each other really hard. And the 11 kind of sat back and picked his, his spot to attack. Now he is your leader. The 31 of Marcus Adams trying to fight back. The 5 of Edward Scherer. Now he has fallen prey to the 79 of Ryan Steenbachers, who has entered the picture, trying to move him, himself up into third place. He's going to clear himself, so move the 79 up to third. Now he has a little bit of a gap to make up between him and the 11 and the 31, as those two, they were the they were the two drivers that we saw leading a lot of the uh, a lot of this race. They are now back up to your front two. Yeah, these guys are all over each other, and this battle is really exciting. We have Ryan Steenbachers in that 79, currently sitting P3. He started out here P5, so a couple of spots uh, making up out here in race. You can see on board with him what's going on ahead of him. It kind of feels like that lead battle has simmered down just a little bit, and I, I have a feeling that Marcus Adams is going to try to uh, take over the lead again. That, or I'm curious if he's just going to say, you know what, I can't wear my tires down anymore. It's such a huge battle. You know tires are going to be a huge issue if they keep going at it like that. Absolutely, but it was fun for us, whether they're ruining the tires or not. The 11, a uh, pretty aggressive uh, job of uh, trying to break the draft as he really took a hard right there to, to, get, the, uh, to get the line for turn one. Uh, that gap staying at about a car length, but right now the top six really, really, really close to each other right now. Uh, separated by only about a second and a half so really really tight racing this is what we wanted to see it was a it was a difficult first 25 laps or so a lot of yellows but now now that we've got some green flag action we can see who's going to do the best job of managing their tires who's going to be able to to hold their own hold their lines and uh, use the draft and uh, eventually come away with the win here in auto club we're getting ready to hit a uh, halfway point here at Auto Club. So, it, you know, there's still plenty of racing left. And as I mentioned, I do think that Marcus Adams, he's trying to take it easy on his tires. They were battling it out so hard back and forth, lead change after lead change, that he has no choice but to take it easy. You can see out here the number 20 of Jaden Gimbel. Uh, he started 13. He is up to P5 right now. He's got quite the group around him, so these guys can really work together and try to get up to uh, the lead here. But P5, great comeback for him, making his way through the field. And so far, he's looking pretty good. Yeah, right now, the, the top three <laughs> separated by about five car lengths in total. Uh, just a just a great race between those three, but I really like the position that both Austin Reedy and Ryan Steenbachers are in. Uh, the 31 and the 5, Adams and Scherer, they absolutely fought each other tooth and nail, and I think they, uh, they're they both uh, uh, suffering for it a little bit. The 5 maybe a little bit more, but he seemed to back off to cool his stuff down. Uh, looks like he might be trying to, to close that gap down just a little bit now. Maybe he was able to save enough stuff, but those top three have to be driving each other hard. And, and as you know, in a pack, uh, it's 
once you're that second or third or fourth car in line, it becomes harder to control your car, and you have to work that car more because you don't have the air on it. So uh, the the longer you run in that line, the 11 car he can say he can set the pace, he can take it easy on his car, while every car back is having to work just that little bit harder to work his way forward. Absolutely. The dirty air out here can really impact how your car is handling out here. So that's going to be a big issue for these guys tonight. Um, I do want to give another shout out to everyone in chat. Appreciate you guys being here and uh, let us know who do you have winning? I mean, we've lost a, quite a few guys out here from damage and whatnot. So uh, unfortunate night for some of these guys, including last week's winner, Honeycut who was involved in a caution and unfortunately uh, was got a DNF. I believe there are still uh, 21 cars out there, 22 cars, maybe 20 of them still on the lead lap. Uh, so our field's still relatively strong uh, considering all the yellows, only six of six drivers that started this race have fallen off of the lead lap, but uh, a few of them are wounded. Uh, Justin Mons, well back, 13 seconds back. NNR Chevy, 12.9 back. Uh, a lot of these drivers uh, uh, already having to, to, to nurse their cars home. And that's what we have with the faster pairs. You have to wonder if they maybe are trying to work through this stage of the race uh, to, to wait until later to use it, or if they already used it up and are now just trying to fix what they can just to limp home. Our pole sitter, Austin Reedy, he was a, a little over half a second ahead of the field back there. So I don't know if he knows something everyone else doesn't, but he's got the tires apparently hanging on. But take a look at the 88 of Doc Holliday, currently sitting P15, started 21st. And I do believe we saw him up as much as P8 earlier in the race. So we'll see how his race continues out there. But he's going side by side with the nine car having quite the battle with the 48 directly behind him of Michael York. These guys are doing pretty darn good job uh, after a couple of cautions out here. And once their car settled down, they're on the run. Yeah, we had a change for second place. And the way it worked out, that let the 11 just absolutely pull away as Ryan Steenbacher is right now on the outside of the 31 of Marcus Adams. Those two have been fighting for a few laps now for that second position. Uh, the 31 really had a big slow up that let the 79 get by. That cost them a lot of time to the 11, and now they're fighting each other even more, even harder. Now the 5 wants in on it. Edward Schur looking to that outside line. They're going to try to run oh. three different lanes. Nope, two different lanes. As the 19 almost gets to the 31, the 31 has to make a reactionary move, and that's going to cost him even more time. So not the series of laps that Marcus Adams was looking for here. Wow, yeah. I, I couldn't tell if they had any contact or not, but uh, if that was a reaction move, good for him on that one. Uh, but these guys are trying to make their way up as they are battling it out for a second. And that's just allowing him to get away. You can see it on camera right there. Absolutely incredible. These guys need to stick together and say, hey, let's work together right now. we got to catch Austin Reedy up here in the 11. He was our pole sitter, and he has led the most laps here tonight. But, man, this battle for a second, it is something else right now. Yeah, the... the the 79 car is underneath the five. They're two by two right now, trying to, to work their way down the front straight into turn two. The 79 of Brian Steenbachers, they'll have the shortest way around. The five will have a place of momentum. The 31 gets a little bit tight. That forces the six car to run just a little bit higher than he wanted to. And uh, they're gonna hold serve with each other coming off the corner. The five is actually able to clear the 19. So that outside lane prevailing, but the 79, he's going to fight back. These two want that second position really, really badly. Meanwhile, the 11 of Austin Reedy continuing to set sail as we count down another lap. Yeah, we're counting down another lap. And Austin Reedy, you know he's we're just saying, ball it out. I'm okay with it. I'm going to get out of here as they are 2.2 seconds behind him. So that is exactly what he wants to see. These guys, they're just going for it for P2. And if they keep doing that, that's going to allow him to continue to get away. So, and 
incredible job on Austin Reedy tonight. He obviously has got it all figured out, but man, oh man, uh, you see on the ticker there, we got Locklear in the 84 in 13, uh, Hayden in 14, Michael York in 15th, and Doc Holliday, he is going to be in 15th, but quite the battle out here. You see Jacob Locklear in the 84 directly behind the 02 of Chris Gutierrez. These guys really running well out here. But that is a crowded field in front of them up ahead. Yeah, and a nice rebound for that 02. He was the he was the reason for this last yellow flag as he got loose off of turn four. Was able to save it. Everyone missed him. And, uh, and a fantastic job of driving to get his way back up into that top 12. He is looking at an opportunity to, for the top 10. 10th uh, place, Tyler, Tyler Brown currently leading that, that pack right there that's all on top of each other, but uh, uh, still a ways back. They're already 11 seconds back from our leader, Austin Reedy, who continues to motor away from that second group, or from the first group, really. Yeah, really crazy out here. You can see the view as these cars go by really seem to settle um, on this track. They have the hang of it. Lap 50 of 80. We still have quite a few laps here, and I'm curious if we're going to see another pit stop. I'm pretty sure that we will as I think it was uh, 30 to 40 laps on tires. Uh, hopefully I can get a reminder on that, but it's, it's going to be pretty close out here. Back on board the 79 of Ryan Steenbachers, and yeah, tire window is 25 to 30, so most definitely going to have to see another pit stop for these drivers. Yeah, that's in the place where you want to drive around with old tires. Uh, yeah, I think you want to cut this cut this race, the rest of this race, as evenly as possible. Uh, between, uh, to make that window even so that you're not putting, uh, uh, so you're putting as little stress on the tires as you can. Uh, that puts you at, at an opportunity to, to get caught out by a yellow flag. Uh, especially if uh, some of these drivers try some aggressive strategy, which honestly is with the advantage the 11 has. They, they, the window is open for a lot of these guys to, to try some strategy to stay out as long as they can and hopefully get a yellow flag during the pit cycle. But uh, right now, I think, I think most of these guys have realized you just need to survive uh, this race, just survive the racetrack. As uh, things have gotten darker, uh, the... That track temp has got to be going down. It's got to be uh, uh, tightening up just a little bit. Things are getting faster and grippier, and, and that's got to be uh, that's going to be conducive to some good racing here as we uh, get to these last uh, 28 laps or so. Yeah, the gap to the leader has increased. I mean, we're out here on board with Austin. Again, they are about two and a half seconds behind him. So uh, he, a phenomenal job by him and. Uh, like I said, you know he's looking in that rearview mirror, but let's go back to P2 and see if these guys are going to indeed continue to work together. We have Ryan Steenbachers in the 79, uh, 2.6 behind the leader at the moment. We have the five car of Edward Schur. He is going to be in uh, P3 right now, but these guys kind of separating a little bit. You saw Marcus Adams. He has fallen back as he was towards the front he is p5 right now you know that battle that they had that we talked about earlier that definitely had an effect on his tires and he is most definitely feeling it at this point absolutely it, it, it was with him and the five the five as we noted uh backed off of that out of that battle let let adams and and, uh, and our, our current leader reedy and steenbacher battle it out and Right now, that looks like a, a wise decision as the five of Edward Schur is putting, uh, putting a, a lot of distance between himself and his uh, former battling mate, Marcus Adams. Uh, with Andrew Wisdom in between them, he's still working on Ryan Steenbachers. He's trying to run him back down to retake that second position. But right now, that is all these drivers uh, can race for as Austin Reedy continuing to set sail out in front of everybody. Yeah, and this being round two, there's still so much racing left in the season. We have only just begun. So you got to just right now stay clean out there. Try to gain as many positions as you can and just keep it clean. That's going to help you out at this point. So uh, we see the number six out there looking pretty good. That is Andrew Wisdom. 
You see Marcus Adams behind him falling back just a little more, but great race so far for Andrew Wisdom in that number six. He's P4 at the moment, started P2. So uh, you see what that is right there at the moment as they are in a three three car group as they are trying to catch the leader. But Austin Reedy, he's he's on a whole different level tonight. Yeah, it's it's weird to say that a driver who started on the outside pole and has been in the top five most of the race is uh, is having a quiet race, but that six of Andrew Wisdom is having a relatively quiet race uh, as he is running in that fourth spot. Very, very solid. He's looking like he's uh, maybe a little bit quicker than these two drivers ahead of him, so he's going to be looking for that second spot before these pit stops begin. You know, and having a quiet race may not be that bad considering all the action of cautions and, you know, people getting involved. Having a quiet race is actually a very good thing as he's proving that right now. We are on board with the five of Edward Schur. He's position three right now. He has led two laps here tonight, and that will give him a couple of bonus points towards uh, the standings here. But these guys, you see Austin Reedy way up ahead and... There's just no catching him at this point. I don't know if they can catch him before they go into their next pit stop. And pit stops have begun the 53 of James Hudson. He has come out of pit road and he is flying through these drivers. And this is where things can get really, really dicey. As we see Steenbachers, he peels off for pit road. I believe sure behind him as well. Uh, we have a lot of drivers that are gonna be out there on <laughs> running completely different paces with each other. Uh, that's going to be tough to navigate the field uh, as as fast drivers or are uh, going through some cars with some worn tires. Really, really tough time, but hopefully uh, we can make it safely to the end of this pit stop as the 11 car, also our leader, has also hit pit road, I believe. Leader has hit pit road, and this is definitely in the window to make it through to the final part of the race uh, for the finish. So it's going to be really interesting, as you say, Jordan. How are these guys that are coming back on track with fresh tires, they're gonna be so much faster than the guys who are on older tires. It's gonna get pretty crowded pretty quickly, but uh, I think these guys will all start coming in uh, very, very soon as you see these guys making their way around the five and 20 of Gimbal. These guys are making their way through and uh, so far, Edward Schur, he is the leader, has not taken a pit stop just yet. I'm curious if we'll see him go around this time. And he is uh, not quite going to be able to get to the 11 car as Andrew Wisdom actually makes the pass to take the lead away from Edward Schur. So move Andrew Wisdom to P1 as he makes yet another lap, uh, refusing to come down pit road. The thing is, is that it seems like they would be losing a lot of time, but down the straightaway, able to draft and not really gaining or losing a whole lot to that 11 car who is already pitted who has been the race leader here. Through the corners though, a different story. They fall way off. And here's where you have to wonder if maybe they need to come to pit road right now to, to minimize the damage. As we see the 22 of Jason Keffer, he is pulling off of pit road. He has had a solid run after starting deep in the field. Was able to make a pit call in his run in the top 10 most of the race since. Yeah, you know, it's interesting to see these guys stay out so much longer than the leader. If I see the leader pit, I'm going not too long after him. You don't want to lose that time. He's on those fresh tires and is able uh, to take advantage of that. So these guys really need to try to get in there and uh, try to get those fresh tires and everything to last for the end of the race. Otherwise, uh, they're hoping on some other kind of strategy to come into play here. And it'll be very interesting to see how they last. I mean, they will have newer tires as they come out. So I'm assuming they're going to they're gonna hope that they can catch back up to them and hopefully pass the 11 of Austin Reedy, who has older tires at this point. Yeah, and as they cross the line, there will be 11 cars on the lead lap as the 79 of Ryan Steenbacher gets his lap, lap back. Uh, the 22 just got his back a little bit ago. So uh, right now, or actually, there's eight cars currently on the lead lap. The first car lap down is the nine, or is the 31 of Marcus Adams in ninth place. So that's that's what you're playing for is to, to keep trap a bunch of these drivers a lap down. But a lot of these are drivers that they weren't racing with, and that's where you have to wonder what the strategy is here. 
if they can't go all the way, which obviously we, we don't believe they can, as the six and the five, they continue to race each other while trying to conserve tires, while trying to, to, to stretch their tires and their fuel and everything. Uh, you have to wonder what might be going through their mind here is the 31. He's going to try to pick his way through the through these two, and he early he's going to have nowhere to go and uh, be stuck behind the five. Yeah, very interesting right there. Marcus Adams just uh, flying by these two, trying to make his way around him, and that's what we're going to run into the, with these guys that have fresher tires than the others and uh, just trying to maneuver around everybody. So we'll see how that works out. But the five and the six, they were definitely battling it out. And I'm very surprised on that. But uh, here they come on to pit road. Oh, the, oh, the six, six loses it. Loses it. Oh, the five narrowly missed him. And very, very close call. But Jordan, that's going to count. That's going to cost them a lot of time on pit road. Yeah, when you make an aggressive uh, strategy, you, you, you can't allow, you can't make any mistakes. And Andrew Wisdom, who up to this point had driven a very wise race, uh, made just a small mistake there coming to pit road that's going to cost him a fair amount of time, able to hold on to it for the most part and, and really save himself from a lot of damage. Could have been a lot worse, but I believe the 11 car of Austin Reedy, he should cycle back around to being the leader here. And he these drivers are still on pit road. They were, they were about three seconds, four seconds back of him when this pit cycle began. They are now going to be about a half a track behind him as they come off the pit road. Yeah, you see Austin Reedy, uh, he is currently P1, our leader. He's got the car behind about 0.4 seconds behind, so he's got a little bit of a lead at this point still. And we've seen that a lot tonight from him. So we'll see how these guys come out and how it, you know, fares out for these guys. But we have 17 laps to go, so we're kind of coming down to it right here. You need to gain all the positions you can. Austin Reedy is now on older, a lot older tires than these guys who are just now coming out. But will it be enough for them to catch back up to him and hopefully pass him? Well, the, the, the major issue that they're having to deal with is the, the five of Edward Schur, it appear, as he's fallen down the running order, it appears he had some issue coming off of pit road. Uh, but the six of Andrew Wisdom, he's in seventh. He's got to, he's got to pass five cars before he can even get to, to Austin Reedy. So that's, that's the big issue here. And the, the difference in tires uh, from, you know, 30 lap old tires to, to, to one lap old tires is uh, a lot different than, you know, a 10 lap old tire to, to one lap old. So it's, I, I just don't know if that was the play. Maybe they felt like that was the only opportunity to get the win. But once once Austin Reedy was able to, to, to get his lap back, I, at the very least, I think that was when they needed to come down pit road. But either way, I don't think anyone is going to beat this 11 car tonight. Jaden Gimble finds himself in second place. Actually, a very, very nice comeback uh, from, from earlier issues, a, a poor qualifying effort able to work his way up has had a really solid race since then narrowly missed an act well maybe not narrowly but he was right behind an incident uh currently running in that second place i think he took advantage of maybe a really early pit stop to, to leapfrog a few people but right now uh, he's currently holding it down in p2 with james hudson in third brian steenbacher's in fourth and jason kepper currently running fifth as you saw Marcus Adams out there earlier, he has fallen, I do believe, to seventh. But that is your top five right there. Reedy, who is leading the way with Gimbel in second, Hudson in third, as Jordan said, Steenbacher's in fourth, and Keffer in fifth. That is your top five. Uh, still a lot of racing to go. We have 13 to go. I don't know if it's going to be enough for some of these guys with the strategy that was played. But I'll tell you what, I did see something, Jordan. I saw Honeycutt out there, even with a 30 minute repair for him. He still kept it out there and he's not on track. Yeah, unlike unlike real life, uh, I racing with no caution block. Uh, if you can get her back out there before the race is over, you might as well get her back out there and see if you can make up a couple of positions. And I believe he has been able to make up at least one. He's got 10 positions to go, or 10 laps between him and the next driver. So. Don't think that one's going to be made up, but still 
Uh, nothing wrong with trying as we're looking at Christopher Fathke in the 20th position. Now Jaden Gimbel in second. Oh, we're right back to the Christopher Fathke. Christopher Fathke out in P20 right now. Started uh, 27, so quite a few positions gained for him. We'll see if he can make up a couple of more before this race is over with 12 to go. But uh, he is minus a lap to our leader of Austin Reedy. We're on board with Jaden Gimbel, who is second. He's got Ryan Steenbachers down below, and that is going to be quite the battle out there as they are really, really close. But Steenbachers has a little bit of a nose out. He's P2, but can he hold on to it? Gimbel's going to have that nice momentum coming off the turn. I'm not sure it's going to be enough as they come around. Steenbachers might take over P2 and hold on to it, but uh, Gimbel's... We'll see. We'll see what happens, but it looks like he's going to tuck in and uh, take P3. Yeah, it looks like uh, Steenbacher's gimbal able to fight back really well on that outside lane, the 79, giving plenty of room for him to, to be able to work. But I think the 79 is a little bit better. The 20 it maybe has saved a little bit during this run because he is giving a, a, a spirited effort to fight back on the 79 of Steenbacher's gimbal holding on holding on to second for dear life in that outside lane able to able to win the race down the straightaways and if he can stay on that right rear of the 79 at corner exit he's going to, to end up uh, uh, wearing that car out but the 79 able to clear him finally when he just got a little bit tight it looked like up in that high lane move the 79 of Ron Steenbachers up to second the 20 of Jaden Gimble back to third as these laps close down, they're heading around to nine to go. Yeah, you know what, if I'm Gimbal, I'm just gonna say, you take P2 for now, I'm gonna try to come back at you and save some tires until then. And then... But it is coming down to the wire, Jordan. We have Austin Reedy out front. Can anyone catch him? 3.9 seconds behind our leader. That's insane. The strategy that Austin Reedy had it is definitely working out for him. He was our pole sitter tonight, so he's going to have a lot of points going for him uh, if he wins this race with everything else that he was able to do tonight. But Ryan Steenbachers, he's trying to hold on to P2 with Gimbel trying to hold on to P3, but has fallen back a little bit from, uh, from Steenbachers. Yeah, and I, I, I go back to that, that restart earlier in this race, uh, earlier in green flag run at lap uh, 26 I believe lap 27 uh, about whenever it was uh, when Austin Reedy it just seemed like he was pacing himself as everybody around him was racing each other really really hard fighting each other tooth and nail on that restart as you should that's the, your best opportunity to make up positions in in a, in a NASCAR stock car when it's so tough to pass and drivers are so close in speed uh, the 11 looked like he was just taking it easy found himself a hole to, to sit in let the laps tick off and then he decided it was his home to go and since then he has been shot out like a cannon because he is taking off another lap as the leader heading down into turn one seven to go and a big comfortable lead he can just make laps and hope that we don't get a yellow that is just insanity he is phenomenal out here great job to him uh, I want to give another shout out to chat. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Thank you for the cheers, Hall. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome out there. But Austin Reedy, I don't think unless he makes a mistake or like Jordan says, a caution comes out. This guy, if he can hold on to it for seven more laps, he is going to be our winner here tonight at Auto Club Speedway. But these guys in second, third, and fourth, there's still quite a battle to be had, and they're definitely going to go for it. We got Jaden Gimble in third. We got Ryan Steenbachers in second. Uh, it's going to be close, but even with that, look at Ryan Steenbachers. He's got uh, Jaden Gimble behind him 1.4 seconds back. That battle between him and Gimble really destroyed his tires for Gimble. So Ryan Steenbachers, if he can stay clear and hold on to those tires, he will secure P2 tonight. I think I think Gimble has been on his tires up fair amount longer than uh, Steenbacher. He pitted, it looks like, at lap 54 while Steenbacher's came in at about lap 58. So only three laps difference, but still uh, Steenbacher's with a little bit better tire. The 31 of Marcus Adams, he has rebounded 
he had, he had a rough few laps there before that pit cycle. He is rebounded back into a top five position. He has the six of Andrew Wisdom behind him, which he is on the freshest tires in the field alongside the five of Edward Scherer, but it's going to be just a little bit too little, too late. He's making up ground on our leader as as much as well as the rest of the field, but I, he just doesn't have the time to, to really fight for the win unless we get a yellow. Absolutely, but considering how he started in 19th, I mean, he has gained a lot of positions here tonight. Great for the point standings, but uh, yeah, with everything going on tonight, I, like you said, I don't think that he's going to be able to gain any more, more positions here. Uh, we'll see what happens, but man, four to go. So we're under five laps here and Austin Reedy. I just don't think anyone can catch him. This man is on a rail. He is just doing a phenomenal job, has led 50 laps tonight, 50 out of uh, almost 80. We're, we're coming down to the wire. So if he can continue, I don't want to give him the booth jinx, but man, oh man, this guy is on a rail. Steenbuckers is about a tenth a lap faster than Austin Reedy right now, but uh, at that at that pace, he would need 36 laps instead of three. So just a just an absolutely brilliant performance out of that 11 from Reedy. Steenbuckers uh, a, a strong race all race long. Jaden Gimble again that, that has been solid pretty much all day since arriving in the top five. He never left it. James Hudson, another third driver who's been kind of quiet. Uh, we remember him and and Jake Joel, and those two were bouncing off of each other down the front straight. I think the last time we gave him proper uh, camera time, uh, those two were bouncing off of each other as they went down the front straight uh, into a massive melee, the one that, uh, that involved last week's winner, John Honeycutt. Uh, Hudson with a fabulous rebound up to the fourth place and then Marcus, Marcus Adams behind him rounding out that top five. But him and he's going to have to hold off the six of Andrew Wisdom. Andrew Wisdom has been one of the fastest cars on the, the track. He has the freshest tires in the field. The, the six looking at tracking down that 31, and I don't know if, if he's able to get to the 31. I don't know if the 31 is going to be able to put up too much of a fight. Yeah, it's getting really interesting up here, but I do want to point out that our top two guys out here are teammates so we have one to go and that battle was brewing up uh for fifth at the moment back there but man oh man austin reedy final lap for our soon to be winner if uh nothing happens with him but here he comes around the corner onto the straightaway here and uh, I think we're going to have to crown him as the winner at Auto Club Speedway once he comes around. If nothing crazy happens. Gotten there yet. I, <laughs> yeah. Don't do it to him. <laughs> I don't, don't want to do it to him. But here he comes around and he's ahead of him. But I don't think that is going to affect him. We're going to have Austin Reedy in that 11 car as our race winner here tonight. A huge congratulations to him. Let's see our second place. If we can get him across the line, Ooh, that should be. For fifth. Wisdom's oh. going to get him at the line. Wisdom gets him. I do believe Ryan Steenbacher should be second. Uh, we'll see who finished third. Uh, Jaden Gimbel is going to round out our top three with Hudson in fourth. And we're going to have fifth, I do believe, is Wisdom with Mark Adams just behind him in sixth, while Keffer is going to be seventh and Schur in eighth. So close tonight, J-Mac. Absolutely, I should say Jordan. Very insane racing out here. Great job to Austin Reedy. We will get interviews with these guys uh, after we'll see him do a burnout here. Yeah, it took the it took the sun going down to uh, to, to, to make these guys to calm these guys down. But usually it's the opposite. Usually things get a little wild and wooly whenever the the, the sun goes down. This tonight it, it took it going down in the race for uh, these drivers to kind of find the grip and, and the patience to be able to, to make some laps. Once we did, we saw some really really outstanding racing. And uh, like I said, the 11 played that run incredibly incredibly well and that was the difference in him winning this race. Yeah, we're gonna get these guys in the booth. Uh, we'll see if we can do that. We got Jay in here, we'll get him in the booth and uh, he, I do believe, was third. Now I'm trying to get Reedy in here, Steenbockers, but it won't go up for me. We'll see. I'm trying to get him. I might have to put him somewhere. <laughs> 
Oh, where'd he go? Austin Reedy. Okay, let's get in here. We got one. And then we need to get Ryan up in here. He was in second. These guys are teammates, so really cool to see that. All right, we have Austin Reedy, our winner out here, and you see his teammate Ryan Steenbacher sitting directly next to him, and I'm still trying to get Steenbachers in here. Uh, I'll, I'll try to drag him up for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. There, there, there he is. My screen wasn't big enough, so it wasn't dragging you guys up. It was terrible. Uh, Austin Reedy, you were unstoppable tonight. Way to bring it home. You led a ton of laps out here. Tell us about your strategy. It was just really about being consistent and um, knowing when to pit there. I mean, we pitted, I know me and Ryan had a plan to pit with about five laps before everybody else, and it really paid off. So that was our plan. I know we had another race last night where we had some guys pit before us, and they just pulled us. And then we had the same plan going in, just being consistent, saving a little bit of tire, and kind of just dominated tonight. Yeah, you guys definitely did do that. A great run for you. And uh, obviously seeing how that played out for your previous race has worked out for you tonight. So huge congratulations uh, to you on your win at Auto Club. Going to be great momentum moving forward and really fun watching you dominate out there. Yeah, I was going to say thanks to Summit Plowing, uh, Sandwich Man Racing Memorabilia, and then uh, Shoney's Restaurant. They always sponsor my cars make me paint schemes and bronco team big fast team all them guys absolutely congratulations to you and jordan if you want to give an interview to uh p2 out here ryan steenbacher is an incredibly solid race coming home p2 uh teammates sweeping uh, the top two spots uh it was tough going there at the beginning a hard time getting some green flag racing in but once it went green uh you two rose to the top uh talk about your race and and uh and coming home second place as far as the race uh, it took me a little bit longer to find it the groove than i would have liked and uh, just 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 battling battling some cars and kind of working my way through the pack i, I didn't have the clean air all the time and uh, it was a bit of a challenge a lot of fun and, and just nice to be here in second place with uh, two separate cars first and second yeah, obviously that's exactly how you'd want it to work out uh the two uh, uh top two for the two teammates uh um what was it like uh, watching him uh, kind of sail off into the sunset there uh i know i know you're happy for him but uh, you wanted that one spot uh, what did you need uh to be able to to run him down there at the end most certainly a double-edged sword it was it was nice to see him take off and at the same time it was uh, a little bit of a hit on the ego how come how come i can't catch him or what am i doing wrong but uh, it's a nice thing with working with reedy is, is we're bouncing a lot of information back and forth key information tire wear lines you know as the sun was going down it was getting darker and darker different things develop in the track and and things can change how hard you can drive the car so it like i said it's a bit of a double-edged sword um that last and I think I had the worst set of tires. I did a lot of battling. Uh, guys weren't too easy giving up spots, and I don't blame them. It's uh, the, the, these guys you know, always give everyone a good run for their money and, and, and challenge. So I, I think I had a bit more tire wear than Reedy. I had to work a little harder to get back up, and, and that's not to discredit his win. It's just the situation I ended up in. Well, still a strong, strong run for, for, for both of you guys, honestly. Uh, well done, well fought, P2. Thank you. Thank you. Jaden Gimble's going to run out the podium finish here. Uh, how did your go and, you know, how did your strategy play out for you tonight? Uh, it was very stressful at the beginning as I was kind of caught in the traffic and avoided most all the cautions. I had zero X the whole uh, race, but uh, I knew from last night we, we all, me, Reedy, and Steen all ran auto club in another league. And we knew that short pitting it and dividing it in half is probably going to pay pay off the most because uh, I don't I don't know why you just it seems like the tires even out and as much speed as you can get for pitting the other cars pitting it you're making up time so uh, that was kind of the strategy I had going into the race uh, I want to say I want to apologize to Steen I was probably one of those cars that was hard to get around. 
uh, at the end there. Uh, I didn't mean to stop your momentum from going because I knew you were faster than me. I just I I had the high line and it was sticking. I was kind of hoping he would just get around me. So uh, sorry about that. I know you had a car there to run with Reedy and really didn't mean to ruin your race, man. That's okay, spots are, spots are earned, not given.